Welcome to lunch. And uh, my name is Bob Hupp. I'm the producing artistic director of Arkansas Repertory Theater. And Michael is already on his way to the airport. But I, I, if, if he had been here, I would have said to him, I think he thought we were a little quiet this morning. And I would have said to him that it wasn't that we're a quiet group, it's that we were so caffeine deprived that we, uh, we didn't know what to say. Uh, but uh, but um, I want to take this opportunity on behalf of our arts and our artists who are here today and our board members to thank Khaki and to thank the Clinton Center and especially to thank the DeVos Institute for being here in Arkansas today to engage us in this conversation. Khaki, it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you. The Clinton Center has provided this wonderful environment for us. And you know, this is the first time the Institute, the DeVos Institute, has gone on the road. So in some respects, we are sort of a, a, a test case or a test market. And how fortunate are we to come together to benefit from what they have to engage us, the conversation they have to engage us. I want to thank especially Michael Kaiser. He made the comment when he started his talk that he was concerned that he was following Bill Clinton. And of course, who wouldn't be concerned to follow President Clinton? But you know, I would say to Michael, he need have no worries about that because President Clinton created the canvas for our conversation and Michael Kaiser created the work of art to fill the canvas. And so that was a great way for us to start this two-day conversation. Of course, I might, given, I don't know where Michael's charts went, but I think he might have missed his calling as an abstract artist as well. Um, but when we talk about thanks for our gathering here today, we especially want to thank the Winthrop Rockefeller Institute. And they are our sponsors and our hosts for lunch today. You know, it is the centennial celebration of the birth of Governor Rockefeller. And to welcome you here today, you notice um, that your program, uh, Kathleen Curry was going to introduce and speak to us today, and she is suffering from laryngitis today. And so we're sorry that you can't speak, but we are fortunate to have uh, sort of understudying for you today is Kathy Edgerton, who is the director of communications and marketing for the Winthrop Rockefeller Institute. It's my pleasure to introduce her. She'll welcome you. And then as we continue to have our lunch, we have some wonderful performances lined up and they'll come in throughout the lunchtime and I'll introduce them as they come in. So please welcome Kathy Edgerton. Thank you so much. Um, it is an honor today to be with you, uh, to stand in for Christy and now our CEO who, who sends her regards and says she's sorry she could not be here today, and also to be standing in for our Vice President of Programs and Marketing, Kathleen Curry, to welcome you today to this wonderful luncheon. Our thanks also to the many, many wonderful sponsors and those who organized this event, which is a great meeting of artistic minds. I'm also honored to be here and represent the Winthrop Rockefeller Institute during the centennial of Winthrop Rockefeller's birth. The Centennial Coalition is celebrating his legacy to Arkansas with a series of events that captured the breadth of his legacy to his adopted state. And his passions were many, as you know, including civil rights, political reform, and of course the arts. If you want more information, we do have a Centennial website. It's wr100.org, so please visit that for more, many of our more events and activities. America's artistic landscape would be totally different without the Rockefeller family. As a family, they encouraged such a rich depth of arts in the country, an appreciation of the role that arts play in nurturing our souls and inspiring our better natures. The Rockefellers left their imprint on more than 30 institutions in the United States, including the Museum of Modern Art, the Lincoln Center, the Cloisters, and art museums across the country, including here in Arkansas. But perhaps most important, the Rockefellers believed that art and the enjoyment of art and the healing power of art were gifts that would be accessible to everyone. When he moved to Arkansas in 1953, Winthrop Rockefeller brought rich, a rich heritage with him. In 1957, he and his wife Jeanette joined the Little Rock Junior League to revitalize a small museum in Mark MacArthur Park. The Rockefellers agreed to help on the condition, this one condition, that the new museum serve the entire state, not just Little Rock. 
In 21 days, they visited 19 communities, having lunch and dinner to sell the Arts Center for all Arkansans. In the process, they helped create a whole new philanthropic vision for the state and the people of Arkansas. Winthrop Rockefeller went to the Rockefeller Brothers Fund, which matched the money raised. Rockefeller family members contributed art, a Diego Rivera and a Monet, and with more support from the Rockefellers, the newly christened Arkansas Art Center acquired an art mobile so that the center could take art from one city to the next, all over Arkansas, so all Arkansans could have access to art. At the time, Dorothy Kilgallen, who was a New York Times columnist, wrote, and I quote, Wynn is just trying to take culture to the barefoot people of Arkansas. I laughed too when I had read that. This really grated on Winthrop Rockefeller's nerves, according to his biographer, John Ward, because this was so far from Winthrop Rockefeller's vision, which was that every person in the state of Arkansas had the right to become sensitive to art. To him, Winthrop Rockefeller, art was a right and not a gift to be given from on high. Today, the strength of Winthrop Rockefeller's vision lives on in so many places in Arkansas. Of course, the Arkansas Art Center, but also at the Winthrop Rockefeller Institute on Patty Jean Mountain, where we have hosted many workshops taught by working artists, art exhibits and art camps, an international and national writers workshop, screenwriters and actors um, recently came for a film forum. We had acting coaches and with credentials, including The Godfather, to Back to the Future and Pretty in Pink, and many more. Little Rock's homegrown film talents, Craig Renault and Tim Jackson, also joined us for three days of intense, creative, free-willing, and totally wonderful skull sessions. We are lucky that the artistic director for the film forum that we had recently in March, Emmy-nominated actor Robert Walden, is married to our CEO and donates his talent and his Rolodex to us. We had such a great response from the film forum that we're planning to keep this an annual event, so mark your calendars for March 2013. We'll be bringing back uh, another group of wonderful uh, professionals to the Institute. And we feel like this is our contribution to Arkansas's growing film economy community. When the cares of the world can stop, even for a few days on Petty Jean Mountain, the site of Win the Winthrop Rockefeller Institute and of Governor Rockefeller's former home, magic, creative magic, happens. We at the Institute are working to continue and develop it as a home for thought leaders, including artists, a place where people come to think, revitalize, and then to go into the world and make a difference. And that, we think, is a fitting legacy to a man who gave so much to his adopted state. Thank you. It's so awesomely quiet in here. I am convinced it's the caffeine. Um, as I mentioned before Kathy spoke, we have three different entertainment experiences for you planned for lunch. And let's go ahead and get started. Um, in keeping with some of the things that Michael was talking about, we are honored to bring our leading actress from Arkansas Broadway Theater's upcoming performance of Next to Normal uh, to sing for you. You know, um, Michael, in his conversation, talked about the importance of the idea of family. And in many respects, we are all one family, one creative, artistic family here in Arkansas. Next to Normal is also a musical about a family, although not a family that we all aspire to necessarily, a very real family nonetheless. Just a few years ago, it won the Pulitzer Prize, Next to Normal did, which is rare for a Broadway musical. Uh, but here to sing one of the very moving songs from Next to Normal, which I would be remiss if I didn't say opens at the rep the first week of May. Uh, and our cast is, is here rehearsing right now. Uh, please welcome Deb Lyons, who plays the leading role of Diana, in Next to Normal, and our musical director, Helen Gregory, who will sing from the show, I Miss the Mountains. There was 
was a time when I flew higher. Was a time the wild girl running free would be me. Now I see her feel the fire. Now I know she needs me there to share. I'm nowhere. All these blank and tranquil years seems they've dried up all my tears. And while she runs free. And fast, all my wild days are past. But I miss the mountains. I miss the dizzy heights. All the manic. Days and the dark, depressing nights. I miss the mountains. I miss the highs and lows. All the climbing, all the falling, all the while the wild wind blows, stinging you with snow and soaking you with rain. The mountains, I miss the pain. Mountains make you crazy. Here it's safe and sound. My mind is somewhere hazy. My feet are on the ground. Everything is balanced here and on an even keel. Everything is perfect. Nothing's real. Nothing's real. And I miss the mountains. I I miss the lonely climb, wandering through the wilderness and spending all my time. Where the air is clear and cuts you like a knife. I miss the mountains. I I miss the mountains. I miss my love. Thanks, Deb, and thanks, Helen, and us uh, all. So stick around. Not that you're going to go anywhere, but continue eating. Continuing with our entertainment this afternoon, I know you'll join me in welcoming from Ballet, Arkansas, Leslie Dodge and Toby Llewellyn. Now, they're going to perform an excerpt from At the Ellington. It's called I Got It Bad 
and that ain't good. The composer, as you know, is Duke Ellington. The choreographer is Bud Kerwin. Please welcome Ballet Arkansas. That's Leslie and Toby from Ballet, Arkansas. Thank you. That was great. And I know this floor, yeah, you guys did great. And you know, if you want to know more about Ballet, Arkansas and what's coming up, they have a fundraiser at the Argenta Community Theater called Turning Point coming up on May 11. Check out their website to learn more about how you can find out about what's happening at Ballet, Arkansas. And speaking of Ballet, Arkansas, again, because I'm only up here to do shameless self-promotional plugs. Um, we are delighted that Ballet Arkansas will be performing at the Rep in the coming season. And so we're looking forward to having you on our less slippery stage uh, uh, coming up next year. And let's go ahead, let's bring uh, our next group up here now. I think people are sort of getting at that point in the meal where we're ready for some additional entertainment. We'll just keep things going here. These, uh, these fine looking young men who are coming up to the stage right now are the four Reps. They are Charlie Askew, Jack Dowden, Henry Melhorn, and Matthew Morley. And they are products of Arkansas Repertory Theater's educational programming. Our uh, summer musical theater intensive, our Smitty program, has been going on for over six years now. And these gentlemen are products of that program. And if you've been around Arkansas uh, in the last couple of years, you've probably heard them. They are something of which Arkansas Rep is extremely proud. Uh, and we're honored that they have been representing us uh, with their musical talents uh, across the state. And so please welcome the four reps. We 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 Um, 
much that was lion sleeps tonight and this is uh, brown eyed girl by van morrison so thank you for having us and enjoy hey where did we go Whatever happened Tuesday and so slow Going down the old main with a transistor radio Sitting in the sunlight laughing Hiding behind the rainbow's wall Slipping and sliding All along the waterfall with you my brown eyed girl. Na 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 remember Do you remember when? Remember, remember, remember we sing Sha la 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 Sha la la Sha la 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 Sha la la so hard to find my way. I 
love it, I'm all on my own Saw you just the other day, oh my How you have grown Cast my memories back there, Lord So overcome just thinking about it Making love in the green grass Behind the stadium with you Brown eyed you, my brown eyed girl. Na na na, remember? Do you remember when? Remember, remember, remember? We used to sing, sha la 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 Under the direction of Nicole Capri, that's Charlie Askew, Jack Dowden, Henry Melhorn, and Matthew Morley, the four reps. You guys sounded great. Thank you very much. So continue finishing up your meals there. We've got a few minutes yet before things get started again with our afternoon sessions. Hope you enjoyed our entertainment. Thanks to the cast of Next to Normal, Bally, Arkansas, and the four reps. And enjoy the rest of your lunch.